Exclamation, everybody, and uh, welcome back to Sunday. Well, <laughs> I almost did it. Cube Ramblings is the new name of this series, <laughs> or Sunday Ramblings in Cube World, whichever one uh, you prefer. But I, I, I have rebranded. I have to remember that. <laughs> we are continuing our adventures in Cube World here, our adventures and misadventures. Um, I'm just picking up where, pretty much where I left off in the last episode, where I'm at the Temple of Sarak. And, uh, we're just gonna go through and clear this place out. It looks like it's a relatively low-level, uh, temple, so I should be able to do this without too much of an issue. He says, as his, as his health is, uh, not the greatest in the world. Oh, uh, for me, it is... Saturday night, March 8th, uh, 2014, and uh, it's uh, several hours after my first, uh, I guess you could say, serious <laughs> live stream, if you can consider live streaming uh, uh, a serious thing. <laughs> I suppose it is. It depends on how you, on how you handle it. Uh, there are different schools of thought. There are ones that are like, I'm just going to live stream this because I'm going to be playing a game anyway. And so I might as well be, might as well be recording while I do it, which is nothing wrong with that. I can, I can agree with the, with that in principle. And I might actually do more of that. Um, but there's also the, hey, I want to actually make a, make a, you know, a series out of this. That's, that's online, you know, streaming, streaming series, live streaming series. Uh, and that's what my attempt to do uh, was today. My my attempt today was. Uh, I think it went okay. Um, I have to look at the recorded footage to really find out. Uh, I ended up having lots of problems. I, I tested it. Um, did some test recordings beforehand. And the thing I, I did not realize uh, is just how terrible it is to try to balance your your microphone with the um, with the gameplay going on. Now, I get the advantage, when I, when I record for YouTube, I get the advantage of editing uh, all this stuff together. And when I'm in my editor, I can adjust, since I record my voice uh, separately, I can just adjust the levels so that uh, I'm always uh, audible, uh, easily audible, above the uh, the gameplay that's going on. Unfortunately, in a live stream uh, scenario, uh, you you really have to do all that stuff on the fly, and you're really hamstrung by what what can and can't happen <laughs> while while you're while you're streaming. Um, and of course, I I only have one monitor right now. I, I'm really I'm gonna need more than one monitor, but I need <laughs> I need room to actually fit it first uh, because I have a, a, a hutch over my desk, which kind of limits my my space here. Uh, and uh, you know, number one, you really need that because you have to keep the OBS window open, and that's all your controls and all that stuff. And number two, I ran into a situation that I was not expecting, where uh, one of the games I was playing, Space Salvager, actually takes exclusive control of the desktop. And, uh, from what I can tell anyway, and it's, uh, it made it so that I couldn't alt tab out to get to my, to OBS to actually set it up and, and do a proper, uh, run through and all that stuff and, you know, change audio levels and all that stuff. So I have no idea, um, if any of that, uh, turned out okay, <laughs> to be honest, um, I haven't looked at the recorded footage yet. I'm hoping everything was everything was good because there isn't much I'm going to be able to do to it, you know, editing wise. I don't think I might be able to enhance a few things maybe, but I won't be able to pull my voice out from the background noise. So we have no I have no idea right at this moment whether or not anything useful came out of it. Hopefully it's good enough that I can edit it together or edit it, I should say. And um Put it up on YouTube so that it's there because I did not record to to Twitch. I probably should have recorded to Twitch um, just so that it's it's there ready to go. Uh, but I decided at the last minute I was having problems with Nightbot, uh, my moderator bot. It 
it was down the whole time I was on there. And um, just some various other things that I, uh, you know, I just said, you know what, let me just, let me just stick to the, the normal, I'll record on my machine uh, through OBS and then uh, see what, what comes of it. Uh, rather than trying to record through Twitch, because every time I listen to myself on Twitch, the volume is very, very low. Um, very, very low. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure how to fix that. I've tried. I, I've turned on the um, the mic boost on my PC, so I get like a 20 decibel boost uh, as far as the microphone goes. So that might help a little bit, at least, at least with my voice. Um, but with other things like when I'm playing music and all that stuff, uh, it just doesn't sound like it's very, very hard to to pick things out even when you have the volume all the way up. So it's something I'm gonna have to figure out. It's gonna take me a while to just figure that figure that stuff out. Um, but already I'm thinking of changes to the format of how I do it. I think um, doing three games is probably too too many <laughs> as far as that goes uh i think i might just stick to just doing one game uh each time each session i do this i don't know that i will do a live stream every week uh, i may or may not we'll see uh or, or i should say the live indie feedback live stream anyway i might uh, especially if i only do one game at a time i might just do that uh just so that it's a um a consistent thing something that you know you, it, it's the one of those things that they they tell you about YouTube is like always be as consistent as possible um, when you're doing things so I, I will try to do that also I will probably be doing a lot more live streaming than I am right now uh, now that I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with it I have a couple ideas for live streams uh, and I'm just gonna just gonna blurt them out because this is the format in which to do it. Um, first of all, I'm thinking of playing through the entire Deus Ex trilogy. And I think I mentioned this once before too. Um, that I think would be pretty fun. Uh, that's one of those things where I would not record it and put it up on YouTube because you know I'm probably gonna get hit on the music and all that stuff for that. In that game um, and also I'm trying to keep my YouTube channel focused around indie games although yes granted I do Star Crusader which was not an indie game uh, but I think classic games are are that are several years old or in that case decades old I think are uh, are acceptable <laughs> based upon how I format the channel out so I'll probably do, I'll still continue to do some of those. But I think for some of the other ones, like uh, like Deus Ex, in this particular case, it would probably be acceptable for me to do the original Deus Ex on YouTube. Um, but I'm thinking if I keep it on Twitch, I can keep it consistent and I can go through uh, all of the, all of the, of the games because I still have, I still have Human Revolution here, and I, I I've only played about an hour of it, so I, I forget even how it works, to be to be honest right now. So I would like to get to that at some point. That's one of those few games, one of those few AAA games that I have that I I just have never gotten back around to after I bought it, and I and I pre-ordered it too. So it's just been sitting here collecting dust, and this is my excuse to play it. But given that it's a AAA game, I don't want to get any kind of you know strikes on it <laughs> so I think the the safest thing for me to do is to stream it you know make sort of a triple a stream if you will and just stream it uh, without recording onto twitch and then you know you either you're either there and you and you see it or or you're not and it's, it's just going to be a long form let's play you know you don't have to be there for every little piece of it uh, it's not like YouTube where you, you know, kind of there and just, you know, I got to see every episode, you know, you can just skip a few. I mean, it's going to be a long, a long time get running because I'm going to have to run through every, every game. And those games are, you know, at least 20 to 30 hours a piece and human revolution might be even closer to 50 hours. 
So it's one of those things where they are RPGs and normally if I were doing it on YouTube, I would chop them up into nice little pieces and remove all the uh, extraneous stuff. You know, if I'm grinding or otherwise uh, trying to figure things out or I've run into a puzzle or something like that, doing a side quest, I'd probably cut most of those out if it were a YouTube video. But on, on, on Twitch, uh, you can't because it's a live stream. So I might as well just <laughs> suck it up and play it all the way through and then just not bother recording it because you know, you're not you're probably not gonna miss much, especially if I only do it for an hour or so um each session. But anyway, that's that is my idea there. Also also there was an announcement on the Livecraft Mine server uh last night. I was online for that. There has been a new server started up. Uh, the vanilla server is still there. I will still be on the vanilla server. Uh, but I'm also whitelisted now on the new uh, FTB monster server that Livecraft Mine, the Livecraft Mine guys and Jonesy have, have started up. Uh, it's called uh, tentatively Livecraft Mine Monster. Now, it's... Uh, I, I had a Minecraft FTB series very early on. It was one of the first things I actually recorded. Um, it's also one of the ones that I, I abandoned uh, relatively early in its lifespan. Mostly because I had a ton, ton and ton of footage uh, recorded still. Uh, but none of it was really any good. Like, it was pretty damn boring. And it was my first run at stuff, so it was... It's kind of given that you're going to suck before you actually figure something out. Of course, I still kind of suck, but that's, you know, that's beyond the point. <laughs> now it's my fault. <laughs> it's not, it's not, uh, it's not experience. Um, so given that, and I, and you know, when I started that series, I always thought, oh, you know, I even mentioned, I think in one of the videos that's out there, that there would be a season two. And I just... To myself thought, you know, maybe there would be a season two, but who knows at that point. You know, I, I again, I don't want to rely too heavily on Minecraft stuff because uh, I want my channel to always be a variety channel. Um, there have been many, many YouTubers that I follow and that I used to follow that uh, tried to do other games besides Minecraft and were got such a flood of negativity and, and, and you know lack of views that they ended up uh, <laughs> down downright giving up YouTube altogether. Um, thankfully, I'm not in the same boat as them. I'm actually doing this as a hobby. So I'll just keep on keeping on, regardless of the negativity, if any. Uh, but I still want to, I figure it's easier for me to set the expectation now that it's going to be, that I'm going to play whatever the hell I want to play. And, uh, and not uh, gear my channel too heavily one way or the other. So that said, I do intend to play on the FTB. In fact, I, I've been playing on it a little bit earlier today, even right after my live stream. Um, on the FTB monster server for Livecraft, Livecraft Mine. Um, it's going to be mostly a streaming one, though. I'm going to stream from it probably once a week. We'll see. Uh, maybe more than that. And then every so often I'll just pop in and do a video where I record and just, you know, a YouTube video where I just say, hey, here's an update video of what I worked on and what I've been working on. And maybe I'll do a little bit like I do in, in the vanilla, vanilla Minecraft where I say, oh, let me uh, let me tackle this project right now. And then I cut away and then come, cut back and I've got some progress made on it. So we'll see. I'm, I'll probably do that. It's not going to be a weekly thing, though. I, I'm going to keep um, the vanilla server, vanilla Livecraft Mine server. I'm going to keep that as a weekly thing. And I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing there. Uh, but the FTB one is going to be whenever I feel like I have enough content to put it up for a YouTube audience. Otherwise, it'll just be a streaming only thing. You know, I'll pop on to. Twitch and I'll stream some stuff that I'm doing and you know 
and you're free to tune in if you wish or or not <laughs> if live streaming is not your thing whatever so yes season two of minecraft plus will be returning uh some point in the future don't know when we'll see what happens uh until then i've got so many different videos that i have to take care of right now that i'm not even I can't even give you an ETA as to when that would ever happen. Cool. All right. So, let's, uh, I had a bunch of topics for last week that I didn't get to because I went off on a long, a long tangent. Um, so I'm going to try to catch up with some of them. Some of this, some of this information is, is old hat by now. Uh, some of it is new. So I, I will do some of the new stuff first and then we'll, circle around with some of the older stuff I had listed here. So first of all, we'll start off with all the Kickstarter stuff that I've been deal or tracking and, and contributing to. There was a new one this week that isn't actually new this week. It was just one that happened to pop into my into my email or RSS feeds or somewhere. I don't, I don't even remember how I learned about this. Um, called Tabletop Simulator. Now this one this is an interesting one. It's essentially a multiplayer tabletop game where you just play you know, normal games that you would play around people. So um, poker, uh, chess, um, what was it, uh, reversi, uh, checkers, uh, Chinese checkers, uh, there were some dominoes on there as well. And also a custom mode where you can ins you can import your own images, your own game board images, and your own um, models, and uh, you know make whatever game you want, whatever tabletop game you want. And the idea is that it's online multiplayer, right? So you can connect to you know with your other friends, um, and I don't, is it? I don't know if there's a matchmaking. Thing. I think it's an actual direct connect, so you have to actually, you know, someone starts up the server process and then others join it, I guess. Because um, I don't think they have any, like, lobby or anything like that. I don't think you can go against random people. I, I don't know yet. I, I didn't read anything about that on there, so I assume that that's not the case. But they, um, it's got some physics in it, so you, you can literally pick up the chess pieces and throw them across the board and knock over chess pieces and knock over the whole board and all that stuff, which I guess is, you know, <laughs> I mean, if you're going to do it, you might as well, you might as well go all out, right? If it's 3d, you might as well put some physics into it. But I, what intrigued me about it is that you, the flexibility of it, where you can put in your own games, you can import your own stuff and just, there doesn't need to be any AI in the game, right? Because it's it's too it's a required that you have another person to play with, and as long as you're all following the rules, it's it's just like having a virtual, basically table in front of you, and you're all sitting around a table and chatting. Uh, really cool, and they've gotten pretty far along. I mean, they they were only asking for three thousand dollars, and they've just well surpassed that they're at uh as of when i looked at them a few minutes ago they were at twelve thousand eight hundred and fifty five dollars and uh, there's only four days left which means they're getting down into that golden 48 hours when everybody who who listed it as uh remind me later starts getting their reminders in the in their mail so they'll probably get that last kickstarter bump at the end and because of that because they've raised that much money there's a bunch of, of stretch goals that have been unlocked that are really intriguing. So, for instance, uh, the RPG support. So, they're, they're going to put support in the game for having uh, tabletop RPGs where you can just, I guess, I don't know which one, if it's just going to be a generic support and then you import your own characters and all that stuff, or if it's going to have, like, character sheets and Dungeon Master stuff, or I, I, I don't know. I don't know what form it's going to take. But it it caught my attention. <laughs> I've never played a tabletop, you know, RPG or anything like that. So uh, that would be really cool if I could do something like that. Especially now that I 
sort of kind of know how to live stream would be even 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 cooler in that respect also uh, one of the stretch goals that was unlocked was an Android and iOS version so yes there is a portable version that will be developed of this whole thing which uh, it's probably the use case that I would imagine most people would do, right? You sit down. Uh, maybe there's, maybe there's two of you, and maybe instead of having an actual physical board game, you know, you sit down at a table with your tablets and play that way. I mean, why not? You know, it's it's, it's easier. You don't have to clean up, <laughs> right? You don't have to worry about missing parts. Um. Now, some of the, the two of the. Uh, last remaining stretch goals that they have listed so far oh oh um before i jump onto that the one of the other stretch goals that they unlocked and this one really intriguing uh augmented reality uh for those of you unfamiliar what that means is basically you put a camera um and you face it on either a special board or just a regular old table whatever whatever it may be usually it's a special board with um some with tokens on it and you know maybe barcodes and stuff like that and you point the camera at it and software processes the video coming in from that camera and based upon what it sees it translates it into the game so for instance you could have a tabletop rpg where you actually have say the pewter figures figurines and if they were all tagged uh, either with the barcode or with uh, um, some kind of marker that maybe isn't visible to humans but is visible to the to the infrared or whatever. Um, the camera could track that the game, the algorithms inside the game could track it and actually relay that information across the internet to your second player, right? So you could actually have a physical board in front of you and someone who is not physically there with you and still play the game. That is really cool. Um, I'm I'm curious to see how they pull that one off. Uh, I'm assuming though, in order to really pull that one off, they would have to have their own branded um, games that you would that you would have to buy uh, for that. Unless unless there's some generic way they haven't intended for that. So some of these stretch goals they have listed out, 15 grand if they hit that, which I'm I'm pretty sure they will, uh, is Oculus Rift support, which, I mean, at this point, they're kind of throwing the kitchen sink in, right? It's like, uh, yeah, it would be cool to see the board in, in Oculus Rift, but uh, it's kind of, it kind of goes against the whole augmented reality thing as well. Because <laughs> it's because obviously you're not going to have both the augmented reality running and the and the uh, Oculus Rift running because you're not going to be able to with with the Oculus mask over your eyes you're not going to be able to see <laughs> the board right the physical board so it's, it's a little bit of a let's just throw the kitchen sink at it and see what <laughs> and see what comes what comes to play um, and at twenty grand it's um, 3D uh, mini me, <laughs> mini me characters, where you can take your avatars and uh, you'll get actual in-game 3D avatars to look at, which is uh, whatever. <laughs> I guess you take a picture of yourself and then they they wrap it around the polygon and and call it a day. So that's cool. And uh, yeah, I talked about the uh, the custom the custom mode. I think is the one that is the most attractive. I think that's why. They've gotten so many backers um, is the idea that you can ex easily extend extend it and have it uh, play any of your favorite board games just by importing the images for it. So that is a thing. Um, also, the Wing Commander Music Orchestral Recording Project, which is a mouthful and a half. That Kickstarter continues. They are at uh, $17,043. Uh, they're looking to raise thirty-five grand. They have thirteen days left on that campaign. Um, that's it's going to be a squeaker. I think they might potentially squeak by, and and they might fall fall just short. I'm I'm not sure right now. It's kind of a rough sell. It's a hard sell, right? Because it's a what you're basically 
kickstarting is taking uh, Wing Commander Music, which is already a a niche market, right? And then um, producing a, you know, going in front of an orchestra, getting it reproduced, and producing a nine and a half minute CD of, uh, you know, medley of all those, of all those uh, songs. Um, and then that's about it. I mean, there's no real, there's no real extras you could throw in there, right? To, to sort of sweeten the deal a little bit. So that one, uh, that, that'll be an interesting one. I, I hope it makes it, um, because I, being a, Big fan of Wing Commander. I would love to have all that music, um, especially if it's orchestrated. Um, I love, you know, when orchestras take take a, a stab at video game music. Um, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's it's, it's it's they've still got some some traction there, and they haven't hit the golden forty eight hours yet. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, Galactic Princess. Uh, they have. They're up to 25,923 pounds. Uh, their goal, initially goal, was 20,000 pounds. Um, they have seven days left. Galactic Princess is the uh, side view 2D space uh, trader, you know, merchant uh, slash um, mercenary uh, bounty hunter thing my job <laughs> um, with uh, a story uh, apparently that goes along with it and uh, a bunch of other things that one uh, I, I'm excited about that one but at the same time there there are little things they're just little gaps in some of the verbiage that they have on their Kickstarter that kind of makes me go hmm I wonder what's what's happening here right uh, for instance there's a their their stretch goals, right? Like two of the stretch goals that have been met already. It was the more everything, <laughs> so more races, more uh, weapons, more systems, and then the more modules, uh, more modules for your ship that you can fit onto your ship. Uh, it, they you know they hit those that they, they've gone by and. I still haven't really seen any explanation as to what that actually means because, you know, do we get one more module? Do we get 20 more modules? Do we, you know, there's no real, there's not a whole lot of details. They're very light on the details, which kind of has me a little bit irked, I would say. Uh, and then, you know, in addition to that, the next goal that they have listed on there, 30,000 pounds, it's uh, additional gameplay mechanics and a mining system. Now, the mining system, that's pretty self-explanatory. But then they have additional game mechanics, which is about as generic as you can get. <laughs> you know, it's like saying, uh, you know, what what is a what is a gameplay mechanic at that point? Is it just, hey, additional gameplay mechanic is I, uh, your your crew needs food now. <laughs> Or is it, uh, you know, I, I don't even know what <laughs> what what else would would fall under uh, additional gameplay mechanics for this type of game. I mean, are they going to give you uh, planetary stuff? Or is it, I mean, there's already boarding operations sort of in there. Um, are are there going to be subspace rifts? I I don't know. I mean, a, a little bit a little bit more detail would be nice. You know. I think that's the thing that they're suffering from the most. I think that's why they haven't raised as much money as, as say, other projects have, is that they, they've been very light on the details. And people are pretty um, astute when it comes to that, especially with Kickstarter, because the, there's been a lot of people who have been burned by Kickstarter projects in the past. So I think that's, if there's any anything they can take away from this, granted they've made their goal, but if there's anything they can take away from this is if they ever do... A Kickstarter again, or if they want their you know fan base that has been built up from this Kickstarter to continue to be uh, a good base and not be toxic, they really need to start coming out with the details and be a little bit more detail oriented because right now it's very very generic everything that's coming out of there. 
So that is my that is my spiel on Galactic Princess. Uh, Star Crawlers. Ooh, this this thing, man. I went from a game that has very little uh, detail in it, the Galactic Princess, to one that has a tremendous amount. I mean, I there the Star Crawlers team has been really good with their updates on Kickstarter uh, to the point where I can't even. I mean, they're usually 10 to 20 paragraphs long, and I usually can't get through all of them <laughs> due to time constraints. Um, so they, they, and, you know, a lot of concept designs, a lot of, you, you pretty much know what direction they're going in. They've even had some interaction with the, uh, with the backers. For instance, there was a, a backer vote that just came out um, because they reached the, the, stretch goal of being of introducing an, an additional character class into the game and backers get to jump online and vote for which class they want I uh, just as a point of reference I voted for the uh, smuggler because that to me is very interesting because they, they they're a uh, character based personality that doesn't sound right character based personality <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, other than to say that they introduce sort of a um, a wild card into the mix, where they can uh, basically talk their way out of nasty situations, or even just sort of pull out their blaster and shoot somebody, <laughs> shoot a fool in the in the face, <laughs> a la Greedo. So that's why I voted for that one. The other ones were uh, engineer. Which also was intriguing to me. I, I that was my second choice. Um, you know, if we get another vote for the next class, the next class that I would vote for is engineer. Which, by the way, we get another vote for the second new class at eighty-five grand. That's one of their their goals, one of their um, stretch goals there. So we're almost there, and they they have five days left, so they haven't hit the the golden the golden forty-eight yet. So may very well hit that 85 grand total there. And um, it's, yeah, so many concepts, concept uh, videos, concept art, everything. They've been very, very detail uh, oriented. So I've been very, very pleased with that. Uh, some of their other, some of the stretch goals that were already hit. Um, again, I've said the first, um, first new class. Also, IPS, <laughs> Interstellar Postal Service. That it sounds hilarious, actually. <laughs> it's like in the middle of a battle, you get a package and it gives you weapons or whatever or some kind of perks. That would be that would be hilarious as a random as a random event. You just walk into a into a place and it's like there's a delivery guy sitting there, like, "Hey, I think this is yours." <laughs> that would be terrific. Um, some of the stretch goals ahead, um, did I mention they, they're at $77,786 as of right now. Uh, their original goal was 65 grand. There's five days left. As I mentioned, their next stretch goal at 80 grand is legendary backer armor. And I don't know how I feel about that. Um, cause it, it's worded in such a way that only Kickstarter backers would get access to this legendary armor. I don't know if it's, I don't know if they would get early access to it or if it would be, you know, immediate access to it or it's something that only they can unlock. I, I, I didn't quite catch the drift of that um, from what I read there. That kind of worries me though. I don't like that idea so much. It's like, you know what, if you're going to put legendary armor in the, in the game, don't punish the people who didn't, who didn't run across your Kickstarter soon enough. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Uh, 82, at 82.5, um, something called Inferno Squad Enemy C Encounters. I, I, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I assume that they're, they're, uh, some badass enemies that you have to deal with along the way. Um, maybe with flamethrowers. Who knows? And then at 85 grand, as I mentioned, the backers get to vote for a second class new class in, to be introduced in the game. So you want to keep an eye on a couple of those Kickstarters. Also, let me uh, 
look through my notes here a bit. Uh, Star Citizen. There's a bit of a, a bit of an update with uh, Star Citizen. Uh, it's been a while, but they are up to. I think they're very, very close to forty million dollars that they've raised in their crowdfunding, which is just. I, I, I at this point I don't know what people are paying for. <laughs> to be honest with you, I mean, from what I gather, there's this. Uh, this idea that you can buy insurance ahead of time for your ships, and then there's ships that you can buy access to right now, and, and you know to get them right away in the game, and some hangar upgrades, and a bunch of other things. I mean, they, they've sold a whole lot of, I guess, assets, art assets in the game before the game's even been released, which is strange. I mean, it, it's ingenious. Uh, it's an ingenious way of getting more money out of people, but it's also strange that it's been so successful, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, it's it's already in a very ambitious project, uh, and then to... I don't know. I, I, it's, it's, it's being funded, <laughs> is what I can say. Um, it's uh, It kind of boggles my mind as to how it continues trucking on like this. It has slowed down significantly from where it was. I mean, we were getting like a couple million each week, and now it's been it's slowed down quite a bit, um, which kind of has me a little bit uh, a little bit more uh, subdued because then you know I I feel like it's probably more on track now of what it should be. It felt like it was a bit of a bubble going on there, and with that, uh, I gotta say, I've been, I want to keep track of Star Citizen, but the, the amount of information that comes out, especially on Reddit and everything else about Star Citizen every day is so, is so noisy. It's, it's to the point where I can't eat, like after the first two weeks, I couldn't even keep up with all the conversations going on and all the the updates, I mean, it's like everything, everything and anything that could get an update is getting an update sometimes twice a day. You know, there's videos going out of stuff. And it's just, it's gotten to the point where I can't even keep up with it. And, and I'm not the only one. There's been a, quite a few people who have expressed the idea that um, they've kind of gone a bit overboard with the with the updates. Um, it, it's, it's a weird thing to say because, it, you know, People want updates. People want to be able to follow what's going on, especially if they've if they've thrown this much money at it. Uh, but when you have this many updates going on, it's just it's hard to digest everything, especially if you take a week off. Take a week off, you're, you're so far behind all the information that came out that you don't even know what the hell to look at anymore, right? And and they're producing what twenty to thirty minute videos every every day or something like that. Wingman's hangar and all that stuff. It's there's just no way. I I don't I couldn't even tell you what direction the game is taking right now because I missed one week <laughs> very early on, and I've never been able to catch up ever since then. So hopefully the game will be something <laughs> when it gets done. Uh, what I can tell you is that they have said that at forty one million dollars, if they raise forty one million dollars, that they're going to what was it? Uh, introduce procedural generation? Is that what it was? Uh, yes. They're going to get another company involved. And, and already they've got a few companies involved for certain parts of the game. They're going to get another company involved to do uh, continents that you can land on, on the game, in the game, so that are procedurally generated. So, uh, instead, of, instead of everything being hand-woven and only being you know, limited to those hand-woven areas, you're going to have some areas that are, you can go off and explore in, and maybe they're, maybe the structures are generated to make it look a little bit more li alive and vibrant. However, that is not something that will be on release date. That's something that will be like, not, not DLC, but it'll be an update later on uh, after the game has already gone gold. Uh, so, at this point, they have so much on their plate that they're, they're already planning for releases beyond uh, the original the original the release of the game 
which they already were. They were already planning on having continuous updates afterwards, but they're so far ahead now that it's <laughs> they can they can confirm a bunch of things. Uh, and catch up with some more Kickstarter things that uh, were successful and that I followed in the past. Uh, Pulsar Lost Colony last week uh, came out with their first alpha uh, release uh, for the for backers for the Kickstarter backers only and PayPal backers I guess if they if I don't I think they have a PayPal button as well uh, I was able to jump into it for about 20 minutes or so and then I and I had to jump out uh, there were, I think somebody did jump in on the game that I was in, because it is like a jump in, jump out multiplayer. Uh, but I was having a lot of trouble just trying to control things. There's, there's no, it's very basic. There's no menus really yet. And I didn't know what controls do what. I tried flying the, sh flying the ship around and nothing was happening. So uh, I had I have to dig more into that to find out what's going on there. But they're all, there were bots in there ready to take control of some of the command. Uh, systems. However, the bot that was in control of navigation refused to actually go to the navigation <laughs> control. <laughs> it is very, very early. Very, very early alpha. Uh, so, hopefully at some point I'll be able to take a, a look at that, a little bit more of a look at that. Um, probably as, as, as a live indie feedback stream, maybe. We'll see. It is still even early for even a little bit too early for that. I would th I would think. Uh, and there's been a few updates from uh, Zeboid Games and Cosmic Star Heroin. That was another one, another Kickstarter game that I've been involved in. They um, they're working uh, a lot on their battle system uh, recently, and they've sent out a bunch of screenshots and uh, various questions about what what would look good, what wouldn't look good. Everything seems to be shaping up pretty well there. It's it's got uh, it's got the four you know the portraits of your of your party that you would expect, uh, and then what your current effects are, spell effects or weapon effects, whatever. And then they're taking the approach that they did with uh, on the rain slick precipice of you know the penny arcade ones, the penny arcade games, where they introduce the the timeline bar. So there's going to be a timeline bar where you can see what's, who's got the next turn and who's got this turn and all that. Um, and actually, it's I should, I should preface that by saying it's not entirely like the Penny Arcade one. If I remember correctly, the one that they introduced with Penny Arcade also dealt with. Um, it wasn't just whose turn it was; it was also when your certain spell effects would take would take effect. This one was just a turn counter like okay he, this guy based on his speed is going to go next and this one's got the next hit and this one's got the next hit so on and so forth so that's cool there's there's progress being made there and it, it looks it looks rather awesome and uh, there i go using the word awesome again <laughs> oh what else what else we got oh approaching infinity this is a game that i'm going to revisit uh shortly i think it's a uh, 2D top-down uh, roguelike game, space space uh, ship game, where you fly around in your spaceship and uh, try to make it to the the end, the end of the game, the, the last sector, if you will. And there's a whole bunch of quests that you fight. You know, you can do, partake in along the way. You can land on planets and go around and explore them, pick up all kinds of loot, and upgrade everything and uh, basically there's, I think they said, what, three or four, maybe, maybe six different ways of, of ending the game, six different end games to it. So that is, uh, making some progress that what they, what they've come up with now, um, is that they're about 80% done on the main quests. Um... There's a screenshot was sent out of a galactic mega structure, which <laughs> just a giant um, sort of building in space, uh, and 
a uh, also a shipwreck level editor has been has been uh, released where you can make your own shipwrecks that would appear uh, in the game as custom as custom shipwrecks you know and just as you come across a ship you you might come across your own map that kind of thing cool on that cool on that what else we got here um ethereum ethereum an update to that uh just a small update for the backers they were looking and this was like two weeks ago unfortunately i this was i was supposed to talk about this last week and instead i talked about other things um they're looking for beta testers for their steam version but only for backers so if you are a backer of the game you might want to head over to their forums and and say hey you know i got steam i'd like to test your steam version uh because they're not they're not in the steam launcher yet from what i understand it's it's more like you got to download that particular version and then it will integrate itself with steamworks so there is that also tiny trek another another kickstarter update here another successful kickstarter they now have a website and more importantly not only do they have a new website they also just released a a new uh update for backers uh with some more uh it's a little bit more uh, showing you the ground based versus space based stuff so it's it's kind of meshing the two together now to see, to show you how how it's going to work out ultimately and in addition to that their website i went on it they have a PayPal donate button right there on the website. So if you if you missed the Kickstarter for them and you want to donate, uh, you can go and hit their website up and, and hit the PayPal button. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, whatever amount you donate to them will translate to whatever the Kickstarter rewards would have been. And you'll get that level of access to the game. So not too late to get involved on the game in its early progress here. Oh, what else? So much stuff. <laughs> I, at this point, I, I, you know, after doing a live stream today, I am so freaking tired. <laughs> very, very tired. Uh, but we have a few more things here. I've already done at least forty-five minutes, <laughs> so we're, we're we're winding down anyway to begin with. Someone decided to. <laughs> To make the original Legend of Zelda remake it as an Oculus Rift game, uh, and it's uh, there's some video of it. There's also an early beta of, beta of it out there, um, and as far as I know, it's going to be entirely free. So if you if if you have an Oculus Rift uh, and you want to play Legend of Zelda one and see all the 2D sprites and the pseudo 3D realm that they've made around it. Um, you can go check that out. Right now, the version that they have out there is just the first dungeon and the entire overworld. So you can go through the whole overworld and you can go through the first dungeon of the game. Uh, but that's about it. The full version is due later this month. Uh, and it's going to be free. So if you have the hardware, you might want to go <laughs> download... Uh, Zelda VR and uh, play the original Legend of Zelda <laughs> in your Oculus Rift. Uh, there's also videos up there if you prefer to just watch <laughs> what it, what it would look like. Uh, I don't have an Oculus, so I don't I don't have the ability to to do anything but watch videos of it. And uh, the mandate I, I I skipped these guys, but they're I should not skip them. They gave a recent update, or actually two weeks ago, uh, to their Kickstarter backers. Uh, showing off some boarding operations. The boarding operations uh, orchestrator, or battle orchestrator, or whatever they're calling it. And uh, some of the ship interiors. Apparently, when you are in the midst of a boarding operation, uh, you can actually just damage and destroy internal ship components. Uh, which is rather awesome. Uh, the, some of the screenshots they showed had like bulkheads that were blown out and uh, f you know floors with the holes in them that were burning from all the battles going on. 
Uh, very cool stuff. Very, very cool. Also, another little tidbit of information. Twitch plays Pokemon. Holy crap, am I so tired of hearing about Twitch plays Pokemon. But they did uh, complete the original Pokemon game that they were playing. I don't even remember what it was. I think it was Red, Pokemon Red, maybe. And at this point, they've already moved on to the next one. Um, for those of you unfamiliar, it's basically a live stream of the Pokemon, of Pokemon game. And um, everyone in the chat who, who, who is in the stream can, you know, chat out commands to a bot, to an algorithm that will then... Uh, perform those commands on the uh, on the console or on the on in the game I should say so it's basically a crowd sourced uh, playing of through a video game and it's uh, it's an interesting social experiment and they're, they're constantly with lots and lots of views like 80,000 viewers usually at, at, at their peak times uh, they also caused some infrastructure problems for Twitch with all the chat going on. Uh, but, it, it, you know, I don't know how many <laughs> how many games that that would be relevant for. It, it's, it's one of those things where you can't really do an action game, right? Because it, before anybody could react to it, it, your character would probably be dead. Um, but at the same time, you know, who knows? It, it's... It's one of those things where I, I, I don't really see the appeal of it, to be honest. I really don't, but it's, you know, uh, kudos to that team for, for, finding the, for finding the itch that Twitch needed to scratch. <laughs> and woe to the rest of us streamers who will never get any views because everybody's over playing Pokemon. <laughs> oh, and that is fine by me. In every respect of the word. <laughs> uh, Alright. Well. I think. That will just about do it. For this episode. Of Cube Ramblings. Let's just go and get a nice little. Scenic view here. Before we sign off. Excellent. Excellent. Alright. Thanks for watching everybody. And I will see you. Next Sunday.